Welcome to another presentation by the Golden Corridor Manufacturing Group. I'm Gary Scoop, a Director of Economic Development for the Village of Hoffman Estates. We're here today at DMG Moriseki, which is uh, one of the largest distributors of machine tools uh, in the entire world. You've taken something that was worth literally a couple of pennies and turned it into something like worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And that's how we make money in manufacturing, is taking raw materials and turning them into finished goods, and people will pay us for that process of conversion. The United States accounts for one-fourth of the value of manufactured goods. That's true then, and it's true today. Add value to your life and what you're doing. Constantly growing, constantly changing. From experience, I know Steve was talking about the shortage of skilled workers. I, I also take care of our recruiting at Southern Manufacturing Technologies, and I have nine positions open for CNC machinists right now that I have been having a really hard time filling, and I have positions open for manufacturing engineers, process engineers, and things like that. There's been a strong push towards uh, engineering at the high school, as well as engineering and manufacturing. So over the past five or six years, we've been developing a prototyping lab, creating partnerships with industry people, um, to help us to design our curriculum so that it meets the needs of an industry. Some of the people operating, even an operator, here in this town in Chicago, on one of these nine axis or 12 axis machines, um, are extremely well paid individuals. And that's just operators, let alone people who are the design engineers and others that work with the processes around it. A lot of what we do at Wheeling High School requires us to partner with industry so we can place kids into internships and to where the jobs are. We have a lot of parts that are in satellites, um, parts that go on the space shuttle, the missile defense programs, the ecto-atmospheric kill vehicle, which is part of the, the Star Wars missile defense program. A company called like, Semarok, uh, they produce the drill on CNC machines that actually save the lives of Peruvian miners. Down there for 60, 60 some odd days. All across the country, there are jobs available in this industry from machinists, you know, all the way up into the top levels. So definitely don't think that there's going to be a shortage of, of jobs if you do enter this field. We've actually got two students right now that got, they're in high school, they're seniors, they've already got jobs. Um, started off as interns and they have 40 hour a week jobs starting this June, so that's exciting. It just opened up a whole new world and understanding. I did not know like half things about all the accesses possible that it could cut through and all the possibilities that the machines these days can do and there's just basically almost no limitations to their capabilities and uh, it's just a lot to take in in one day and it's just it's all good information. I look at it more now as like I have a lot more options now. Just opportunity, there's just so much opportunity out there. Education is endless and you could learn so much through school and just experience and working with your hands. We're with Chris Kaiser now, president of Big Kaiser. Why are these events important? Uh, these events are so important that we can uh, show uh, our youth uh, that there's other alternatives uh, out there for jobs and especially in manufacturing rather than just flipping hamburgers. I think uh, we've shown them what we can do in manufacturing with the machinery that was shown here at the MG Moriseki, which really shows a lot of new innovation, new ways of making parts uh, in the industry. Ourselves, we are just involved on the tooling side, helping making those uh, machines work and do what they're supposed to do. And uh, I think students today really had a great time. They were really lighting up when they saw all these great machines uh, working out there. I think size was very important. They loved all the big machines, but they also were marveling uh, the different techniques that they were using, especially pinch milling and things like that. So I think uh, they really enjoyed it. They see that there is a future, I think, in, in manufacturing, and that was definitely demonstrated here. And the spindle faces this direction. The cutting tool rotates this way. You think of any advantages or differences between cutting this way as opposed to this way? Well, very simply, if I'm cutting this way and I'm generating the, the chips from the cut, all those chips are usually laying like this. Cutting this way, I'm using gravity to help all those chips fall down and away from the part. 
We have the ability to work on multiple sides. We can work two, three, four, six, eight different sides based upon what our fixtures built like. In this case, we've got a fixture with two sides. We've got the part mounted here and another part mounted over here. We're able to do two different faces of the work. So we, if the workpiece has two operations, we have to machine this face, flip it over and machine this face, we can do it all in one operation. We can machine the front side of the part, machine the back side of the part. My big takeaways from today is just how involved and how much just all the equipment used in uh, mechanic or manufacturing engineering and I'm personally going to be a mechanical engineer when I grow up and what I this opened up a whole new realm of possibilities for me just learning all the different steps how qualified you have to be to be in, uh, to be a programmer to be a machinist and everything like that. The manufacturing industry really has changed, and I think we really need to show these kids that it's advanced manufacturing today. In this style machine, we have a software built into it. It's real world. This is real time uh, graphic representation of what's happening inside the machine. So we have to move it around. Get a closer look. Well, even though you can't see what's going on through the window because of the coolant, you can see here what's going on. What this also does, if the program has an error in it, or a, a, a bad number, or we put in a wrong offset in the tool size, where it normally it, it would cause the tool to go ramming into the rotating device or the chuck or another turret, this system reads ahead on all the movements, and if it thinks it's going to hit another part, it will stop and it won't allow it to occur. It's called a collision avoidance system. And that it requires high skill. Um, and, and the workforce just isn't there yet. When I look to, re to hire for machinists, I'm looking for experience. I'm looking for the knowledge. And I'm looking for people with positive attitudes that, that you know, have a passion for what they do. So we need to address that gap between you know, ages 35 and 40, and that's really where that bottom is at this point based on our experiences with talking with employers. There's nobody before that age to really fill those positions. So if we at the high school level can get them excited and engaged and bring them to events like this where they can see everything in action, that'll really provide them with you know, a glimpse into the future and where the opportunities are and how you know, we can help America become a better economic opportunity for, for students.